All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM. Joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I'm delighted to be joined by Asa Hockhauser, who is in Delray Beach in Florida. How are you doing, Asa? I'm doing amazing. Thank you. That's great. And, uh, and uh, Asa helps marketing leaders drive growth with MarTech and data and is VP of sales at McGraw.io, uh, a team of consultants, practitioners who help companies harness the power of marketing technology and data. And what we're going to talk about today is how to choose and roll out the right uh, sales tech. Uh, because I think as you as you as you have experienced probably many times yourself, Asa is like it's great choosing the technology, um, and sometimes that's done well, sometimes that's not done so well. Uh, but regardless of how well it's chosen, the rollout often lets lets everything down as well because mm -hmm. people don't plan beyond the acquisition phase. Mm, yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah. So um, let's get let's get straight into it. Um, um, what what is a better way of going about assessing the technology you need, making sure you get the buy-in and rolling it out efficiently? Sure. So um, I'll kind of break that into the three parts. So choosing the right technology um, and when to choose it often has nothing to do with technology. Um, so uh, when you are marching towards a goal, like that's first and foremost, making sure that you're, you're always, whatever you, you're doing, you should always be kind of working backwards from, you know, your goal, right? The number that you're trying to achieve the, um, and usually that's going to uncover a whole slew of, of problems, opportunities, whatever it might be that you can, uh, go and get, uh, attack in order to help you get there. And that really should be the driving force behind uh you know technology right you start to understand what are you looking to achieve and then you know how are you going to go about doing it and we all know how many technologies are out there today that's gonna you know there's gonna be plenty for you to go go and find but you'll get distracted if you don't kind of stay stay focused on what's most important to you um getting buy-in i think there's you know obviously going up market as well as uh you know your own teams that are going to be using it it's two very different things but I think they both, uh, you know, should be aligned around a lot of the same things, right? So, um, again, mapping back to that goal and objective, if you're trying to get buy-in from the team, helping them understand, obviously, what the business case for doing so, but you're going to make them feel even more comfortable when they know that your team is going to be more successful from it, and it's not going to be something that actually um, holds them back uh, in the long term or in the short term. Uh, mostly in the short term. And so that's why you need to get alignment on the on the team that are, is actually going to be using the technology as well, right? Um, how is that going to change their workflow? What kind of skill sets do they need? What kind of training is it going to require? Um, you know, putting a lot of thought into that up front, and that should actually really drive your uh, decision-making process as well as the evaluation that you have. Um, and then the third piece, I forget what it was now because um, I've been talking too much. It was rollout. No, you're not talking too much at all. I was just going to come back on a couple of points and then we'll talk about, you know, rollout and that is okay. um, one, of the th one of the things you mentioned at the beginning there is, and I think this is, is a huge challenge um, with web technologies, et cetera, nowadays. <clears throat> it's relatively easy uh, to disappear into your basement for a couple of months and program a new tool. And we're seeing lots and lots of new tools and point solutions coming on the market all of the time. And and to your point is you can get distracted very quickly and, and think, oh, I need that tool or we maybe this tool could work for us or that tool. And you could actually overwhelm yourself uh, and overwhelm your teams by continuing to like lay layer tool upon tool upon uh, on them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I love best in breed. I love point and solutions. I think, um, you know, when they're built the right way, then um, another piece that's really important when you're building your stack is thinking about integrations um, and how things are going to actually connect and talk to each other. Um, and when best in breed point solutions are built the right way to enable that, then I think it's definitely the way to go. There's just a lot of them. So um, you got to make sure that you, uh, you know, again, it's worth the time um, and you understand uh, how it's going to impact your goals. 
Yeah, and I think the other thing too is, I mean, here's a mistake I think people make a lot, to be honest. Mm-hmm. And that is that they think they think the technology will solve all of their issues, but they haven't actually defined clearly what those issues are they haven't maybe fixed the things that need you know process what they haven't laid out proper processes uh i love i always love this thing where people just think uh, i'll buy a technology bring it in and that will fix all of the issues and of course it doesn't yeah exactly it, there's just a big knowledge gap there so i love as salespeople, we should really understand and that goes back into like before you buy everything anything understand your buyer intimately so you know how to engage with them. Um, the same goes uh, with your sales team, right? Is when they're selling a product, they should understand the buyer that they're selling to so they can ask them the right questions to make sure that they're setting them, set them up for success. Um, that's you know always a, a red flag when I get someone that would come in and wanna purchase a technology from me and they're just not asking any of the important questions. As a salesperson, we should kind of stop them and say, hey, have you thought about it this? Not like, man, you want to buy, let's go, you know, it should be really, uh, you know, a, a more consultative approach, um, for sure. Um, yeah. And the other thing that you mentioned is, and I think it obviously critical is understanding, like, what is the business goal or driver for bringing mm-hmm. a particular technology? And because again, I think sometimes that's a little nebulous or vague, I think. Um, but getting really down to it, say, how is this going to contribute? What what changes are we going to need to make to our workflows, etc.? But mm. as you said, thinking about these things <clears throat> up front is critical. Yeah, for sure. I um, first time I ever bought a sales engagement platform, I bought it for the sole reason to uh, produce more activity for my team, and it actually stifled us. <laughs> we bought a tool to do one thing, and it did the exact opposite. Now we ended up figuring it out, but. I just didn't know enough about the solution back when it was still kind of like catching, catching um, wind. And uh, yeah, it was, you know, it's a lot of work to change the way people were doing. Who's used to working in CRM all day and now getting them to figure out, all right, now I have this system and this system. And, you know, do I have to create my own emails or don't I? And you know, it's, it was crazy. So it actually slowed us down. So it was a good learning for me also from the buyer's perspective. Yeah, and and it's a good point as well. The the one that you just made is like you know you have one system and then you add another, and that may be fine. That may be there may be a great reason to do that, but you got to make sure is you know do they integrate easily? Can they talk to each other? How this instead of because the last thing you want is and it's going to defeat it anyway. The last thing you want is your salespeople having to jump from one system to another constantly and there's it, mm-hmm. it's not see it's not seamless it's not easy it's kludgy or whatever and then that just means that one or other system is eventually not going to get used yeah it's exactly 100 percent. i believe the integration piece is so important um too because you typically as a, a you know the best sellers are selling with uh good data. They figure out how, how to have meet their buyer where their buyer is and um, provide them experience that they, that the buyer of where they, based on where they're at in the, their journey. Um, and that's data, right? So how do you get data to actually be front and center to a sales team? Um, is super important to think about when you're, you know, especially for a sales leader and you're buying these technologies, every piece that you put in is more data that you're capturing in some way, shape or form. Um, so how do you make sure that that's usable and, and you're able to get insights from it as well? Yeah, absolutely. So let's talk a bit about the rollout and adoption piece, because I think this is the part that really, uh, you know, really hits people hard and they don't know what to do about it. And this, and to be honest, this goes for a lot of software vendors as well, is that they don't yeah. have a good, they don't have a good support structure or role, uh, you know, to help people with that, that rollout piece. Uh, from your experience, like, uh, what is the optimum way of, of approaching a technology rollout and, and adoption initiative, you know, particularly for a group of people like sales? Yeah. So there's different types of technologies. Um, some are take a heavy lift, like a sales engagement platform where you have to mm-hmm. really figure out the whole di- another workflow. Some are don't, right? So one example that a piece of technology that I've grown to love is is conversation intelligence because you just, it's such an easy install for the most part for the companies that have figured out how to do it really well, where it's really inobtrusive to the salesperson and you're just automatically capturing these conversations and getting insights on them. Um, 
So there's the, I, I kind of put it into the different, there's different buckets of onboarding. Um, and you just need to understand, you know, how, what those look like, um, and then develop a plan around that um, up front, you know, as you're going through the purchase process, because, you know, you usually got to pay for these things, that, you know, up front, as soon as you sign on the dotted line before, you, you know, and you're starting to use it. So you want to get value as quick as possible. So while you're uh, building out your short list of, of solutions and you're starting to get in close to signature, you really should be thinking about implementation and building out that plan. Um, that will uh, you know, help you get ahead of things, I find, a lot of times. Um, also, just make sure you understand what kind of support you're going to get, you know, if you find and, know, and what you need. Um, if you find it's something that, you know, typically needs support from the vendor or you need third party, like make sure that you're understanding that up front as well and preparing for that so you're not got, caught off by surprises. Um, get caught by, by surprises. Um, I also am a big believer in alignment, just communication, making sure that the reason your team isn't really surprised when you when you buy a new technology, um, you know, I think they, they should be really the driver behind it, right? So you, you, the reason why you're going that is because you're helping them, you're moving rock, you know, getting, unblocking them yeah. um, so they can achieve the goal. Um, I think I think is super important. And I'm also a big believer in investing in um, some sort of operational support internally to manage the entire thing. Um, if you're if you're a company that has the resources, buy a top you know world class uh, sales operation, marketing op, rev ops, whatever you want to call it, uh, type of person to come in and manage the implementation and, and kind of get everything rolling and keep it maintained. Um, if you can't go hire someone, usually there's someone internally already that might have some of the chops that can kind of grow into the role. I've often found that some person will live in marketing for whatever reason. They just kind of always seem to have um, the marketing operations person that can kind of right. help out with sales operations. And, um, you know, I think really investing in operations uh, as soon as you possibly can, you know, and that should be immediately, um, you know, when you're starting to build mm -hmm. out a go-to-market. Um, the better and will help ensure success um, short term and long term. Yeah. And then, and then I think some of the things, uh, some of the mistakes that people make sometimes, I think, uh, <clears throat> first off, it's, I think, trying to roll out everything at once, right? It's mm -hmm. like, you know, and trying to, and you're saying, oh, we're going to use all of these features, you know, right out of the box and just overwhelming people. And, and the second thing is, is not defining early wins for the system you know they may be small ones but early early success pointers uh, because otherwise you know you have that inevitable kind of excitement and then you have the motivation dip that comes afterwards because maybe the system isn't it is a little harder to use than the people thought it was or whatever that is um, but I think it's really critical to identify wins early on when you're rolling out a system I agree with you 100%. It's so important. That's a great point. Even when you're thinking about like, if you do a free trial or you have a proof of concept of any sort, um, you know, defining exactly what success looks like and make sure you're working to that. And that can go, that should really go, you know, throughout the lifetime journey of the customer, right? You're always kind of, what's the next thing? How are we going to maintain, you know, what's that plan? And um, you know, again, th as a buyer, you know, we need to be cognizant of that. Hopefully a great podcast like yours is help educating and people are remembering to do these types of things. But I, um, again, I believe sellers have a responsibility and customer success professionals have the responsibility to make sure that we're, um, hitting the pause button if these things aren't happening from our buyers and customers. Yeah. And I think another piece that I'm sure you've come across this many times is, is you need that leadership buy in but not just at the beginning you need it sustained afterwards because i mm -hmm. think people people often you know people take their cues from their leadership whether it's sales leadership whether it's executive leadership or whatever and if they're if they stop paying attention or referencing or or you're talking about the system well then the message that sends to your average user is eh, this doesn't really matter it was just one of those initiatives du jour yeah, yeah, that's fine. some of the most of the, our customers at Magada IO that we get are new leadership coming in to kind of clean house, right? They want to set up their stack because uh, they're at the leadership level, and vice versa. Um, you know, things are getting ripped out or um, you know replaced because maybe they were acquired. I've been through three acquisitions myself through uh, my career, 
And each time the tech stack changes, <laughs> you know, it's like yeah. I lose a tool here and there cause they, you know, uh, maybe I didn't do a good job articulating why we purchased it in the first place. And they already have, well, we could just do that in our CRM or whatever. So, yeah. Yeah, no, I think that's a that's a great point, but I do think it's 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 so critical that leadership stays in, engaged. Um, what are what are some of the other uh, missteps to be avoided when you're doing a rollout? Um, I think we hit on a lot of them. To be to be honest, uh, I think really it's the 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 people, the integrations, understanding what onboarding is going to be like, defining success, mapping back to goals is super important. Um, we talked about uh, not using all of the features um, and that's okay, but if you have a plan to eventually use all of the features, yeah. if that's your plan, um, going back to best and breed, like there's might be a, a lighter weight tool that you could use that has all the features that you'll need forever. And you don't need something that has like the features for five years down the road, right? You can really focus on that and save a lot of money there. Um, and, you know, integrations are fairly, um, they're getting more and more sophisticated. Um, so, you know, it, it's, it can, it's going to be just continue to get easier to uh, rip and re replace systems. So um, I love your point to like, um, how do you get most most value out of the platform that you're using today? And if you aren't going to use them all, like how long are you actually going to wait to use the full breadth of the capabilities? If it's forever, then does it really make sense to put something like that in or can you get something more lightweight? So really mapping uh, features back to your goals and how you're going to use things. Yeah, no, 100%. And then, and then if you do acquire a system that has a lot of features, or, you know, that one that you're purchasing it because you want to grow with it, then you need to obviously have a roadmap for how you roll out the different features um, so that maybe, you know, so you do it maybe sequentially as opposed to all at once. Yeah. And I'll throw one other bonus out there is just around analytics, right? And tracking and getting the things that you want to use for inside generation. Um, when you're connecting systems, you have to think about how the data is going to flow from system to system. So it's one thing if they integrate, but if the way that data is flowing isn't digestible and actually usable on the system downstream, um, I see a lot of messy instances get set up because of that. So um, we call it the at Nagao taxonomy and making sure you're eventing and uh, analytics taxonomy is, is set up um, in a way that is gonna work universally throughout your systems. So um, something that is very rarely given enough love. Yeah, no, that's a great point. I mean, because especially when it comes to integrations, you've got to decide is which system is going to be the system of record. Is it going to be, and is it going to be updating other systems? Is it going to be uni, bi-directional, all of that kind of good stuff? Where should it go afterwards? Who else needs the information? It's a, it is, mm -hmm. um, it, the, the good news is integration is obviously getting easier in some respects, but at the same time, it's getting a little more complicated because if you have these disparate systems, you need to figure out the, the flow properly. Like where does the information go? Who does it go to? When does it update? What does it update? All that good stuff. Yep. What's the format of that data that's even going you know, at certain places that matters to you? Yeah, but it's a really important thing to do um, up front is to gauge that. Um, hey, listen, Asa, this has been great. All of Asa's information is going to be below this video. But before we go, do please do tell people a little bit more about what you and Magaw does. Sure, sure. Yeah, so uh, Magaw.io is a marketing uh, technology and analytics consultancy. Uh, we help the fastest growing uh, companies in the world choose the right technologies, integrate those technologies, and then execute growth strategies with them. Yeah, and, and I would encourage you to check it out. Uh, you know, technology is very easy to acquire today. You know, you think you could, it's very easy to find and acquire, but you can very easily acquire the wrong technologies. You can find a nightmare. It's a nightmare to roll out or whatever. You can end up with a, a much greater total cost of ownership than you imagine. So I think if you're considering things like that, talking to somebody like Magal is a really good idea. To, to help you avoid some of those pitfalls and hopefully some expensive mistakes. Exactly. Appreciate that, John. All right. Thank you. Well, thank you again, Asa. Thank you for watching and listening, and I will see you all again really soon. Thank you.